Hello and welcome to a millinery hat making video. My name is Ilona, I am a milliner based in London and today I am applying vintage style to a modern cinema material. For those who don't know, cinema is a natural straw fiber that comes from the abaca banana tree native to the Philippines. It is sometimes referred to as manila hemp. Now cinema and I do not tend to get along primarily because it hurts my delicate little fingers. I am also not the biggest fan of it as it is not historically accurate to mid 20th century millinery. It was only introduced to the industry in the late 80s and early 90s. However, I am willing to concede that it has its uses. Not only is it generally ethically made and sustainable, it looks beautiful when it is curved on the bias. Just look at the elegant arc of the fibres, I think you can agree, it is pretty stunning. And working on the bias is exactly what I will be doing today. If you'd like to find out why the bias is so important in millinery, you can refer to my video on this topic, which I'll link to in the top right. When it comes to this technique of working with cinema, just remember, this is my preferred method. There is no right or wrong way, it's whatever works for you. Let's gather the materials and get started. Apart from the one meter of cinema, I'm going to be using a triangle ruler and a quilting ruler. These rulers help with finding the true bias. I will be cutting the cinema using kitchen scissors. Don't use your best fabric scissors for this. Lastly, I've got some lining fabric ready as well as a basic sewing kit along with matching thread. For a comprehensive list of tools and materials, please see the description box. The first step is to cut a wide bias strip of cinema. To do this, I'm going to fold my giant piece of material selvage to selvage, forming a right angle triangle. Then, using my triangle and quilting rulers, I'm going to measure a distance from the folded edge. This distance is determined by your desired brim width times by one third, doubled. You must multiply your desired brim by one third to account for shrinkage during the curving process. And you are doubling it because we are going to turn this strip into a giant bias binding, but we'll get onto some other options later. When it comes to marking and cutting the cinema, I tried to use my favourite marking method of soap, but it didn't work as well as just folding and creasing it along the cutting path. Alternatively, you can use a sharpie, and make sure to cut on the inside of the line. While I am here, I might as well cut a couple of 5cm bias strips using the triangle offcuts. I'm going to need these later for a smaller bias binding. Making bias binding is pretty easy. First, fold this strip exactly in half. Then, unfold it, and fold in the outer edges to meet in the middle. However, here's a couture millinery tip. Don't let the outer edges touch the middle fold of the cinema. It will look better if there is at least a 2mm gap. This allows the frayed outer edges to be concealed and not poke out from the centre fold. Once you've set in those creases, fold everything back together along the first centre fold. Now do exactly the same thing with your giant bias strip. I've left at least a 5mm gap at the centre fold. What's really important with this larger piece is to make sure that your bias grains all match up. And whoops, I've gone a little wrong over here. If I match up my grain, my folds start to overlap in the middle, and it's more important that the grain matches. So I'm going to secure the fold and then cut off the excess that overlaps through the centre. Then fold the binding back in half along the initial first centre fold. To set all the folds, I'm using a hot, dry iron. No steam here. Make sure to not stretch the bias binding while you do this. I've covered the surface of my ironing board with baking paper so that the stiffener in the cinema does not stick to it. I have also covered my iron with a Teflon coated shoe iron cover. If you don't have an iron cover, do this the old fashioned way and sandwich your cinema between sheets of baking paper to protect both your ironing board and your iron. To start the curve, I am steaming the outer edge of my giant bias binding. As I steam, I pull. 
Be careful here, steam is hot. Please don't burn yourself. Once I've got the outer curve stretched out, I'll start work on the inner curve by flattening it out with my iron. My iron is set to the highest heat setting with the steam setting turned on. And once again, I've covered the iron plate with a cover and my ironing board is protected with the sheet of baking paper. This prevents the stiffener in the cinema from gummying up the iron and the cover. As I said before, if you don't have an iron cover, you'll need to sandwich your cinema between two sheets of baking paper. To help you get the curve you want, you need to understand the theory behind what is causing the cinema to curve in the first place. On the outer edge of the bias strip, use the steam iron to stretch and pull the weave of the material. On the inner edge, use the iron to condense and contract the weave. It's this action that gives you those beautiful symmetrical sweeping strands of cinema. Here's another tip. Hold the cinema with your non-dominant hand, and with the iron in your dominant hand, Apply pressure and use a pulling and twisting motion to stretch the curve into shape. Once you've got a good looking curve and the outer edge won't stretch anymore, it's time to stop. I've ended up with a strip much wider than I wanted, but that's okay, wider is better than not enough. I'll just cut the excess edge off. Ideally, you won't have to do this as it weakens the inner circle structure. To secure it, I'll turn the bit I just cut off into a bias binding and stitch it on using stab stitches. You can try to sew the cinema using invisible stab stitches on both sides by inserting your needle always at an angle. Or if you don't want that hassle, use a small stab stitch on the right side and a long basting stitch on the underside. Once sewn on, give it a press with the iron to fuse all the cinema layers together. Let's turn this bias curve into an actual brim. I'm going to join up the ends of the curve with a bit of an overlap and cut off any excess following the curved strands of cinema. Use clothes pegs to hold it all together. The angle of your brim will depend on how much you overlap the ends of your bias curve. I'm going for quite a steep angle, so I'm overlapping quite a lot. As usual, I encourage you to experiment and see what you like best. And if you feel like you need a little more help and support than what I'm offering in this video, please consider signing up to my Patreon. I have two membership tiers available. If you decide to join to the cocktail hat tier, the main benefit is a monthly group video call with me and my other patrons. During this call, we chat about your hat projects. This is also where I can give you direct help and extra feedback with all your millinery learning needs. Thank you so much to my current Patreons for all your support. And if you're not currently a Patreon, I do hope that you will consider joining. If my Patreon isn't right for you at this moment, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel right here on YouTube. You can stitch your bias curve ends together now, or you can go a little further and add some vintage flair. I have my steamer on hand to help me. I'm going to bend down the top edges of my brim to form a little lip. Apply steam only to the top edge of the brim and push it down with your fingers. This lip will stand up from where the base of the brim attaches to. It can be helpful for lifting the edge of the brim up to improve the wearer's field of vision, as well as adding extra height to elevate a rounded face shape. And now that I'm happy with my brim, I'm going to stitch everything down in place using invisible stitches. The way to make your stitches invisible is to use a matching thread. 
Insert your needle always at a diagonal angle. This will allow you to travel along your stitching line and hide the thread between all the layers of cinema. From the outside of your brim, make a small back stab stitch and reinsert your needle at a diagonal angle. And repeat this from the underside of your brim. Hide your start and end knots strategically between the layers of cinema. The next step is to make the hat base. You can buy little round cinema bases, but I don't like waste and I have offcuts of my cinema left over, so I might as well show you how to make your own. Start by cutting out several circles. You can make these as large or as small as you like depending on their intended use. There are many different ways to make these bases. My preferred method is to line up the grain lines in all the same way, but to use four layers of cinema for extra strength. The other way is to use only two or three layers, but rotate each layer by a 45 degree angle. The rotation of each layer adds strength. An even simpler way is to use just two layers, but apply extra water-based PVA stiffener for the strength. Next, I'm going to get the piece of thin bias binding that I made earlier and curve it into a circular shape. Then I will attach it to the circles. I'm using mini clothes pegs to hold it all together. I want the front and back of this circle base to align to the bias, so I am positioning the folded over end of the bias strip at one of the bias points of the circle. Once I am happy with the positioning, I am going to use a hot steam iron to fuse all the cinema layers together. Then I am going to add a quick row of stitches just to make sure everything is held together securely. I am using the same type of invisible stitches as with the brim. This time, my stitching line is following the fold of the bias binding. To sit comfortably on the head, the base needs to be domed. I am going to do this on my poupe head, but you can also do this on a standard dome crown block. If you don't have either of these things, you can use a polystyrene ball. All I am doing is using a hot steam iron to curve the cinema circle into shape. Then I am using pins to pin it down. Once it's dry, it can be taken off the block and used. Cinema tends to be scratchy and it can get caught on the hair, so it's best to make a lining. Although this step is totally optional. To make a lining, I am going to trace the size of the cinema base onto the piece of cling film that is protecting Anne, my poopa head. I am using a sharpie and being really careful not to touch the cinema. Next, I am covering the sharpie outline in a fresh piece of cling film. This is to make sure no ink marks transfer onto my lining fabric. Take the lining fabric and pin it to your poupe head or dome crown block. First, pin the straight grains. Then, when you get to the bias, stretch the fabric to eliminate any folds, lumps or bumps. You want it to end up as smooth as it can be following the curvature of the block. To make sure that the lining fabric remembers its stretched shape, I'm going to stiffen it with a 1 to 1 PVA to water solution. Use a wide brush to paint on a thin layer, making sure to cover the whole fabric, even behind all those pins. Leave it to dry and take it off the block. Don't forget to fold and iron back the edges so that it looks nice and neat when it goes into the hat. While your lining is drying, make a trim for your hat. I've made a looped cinema bow. This part of the video is available to view through my Patreon. I'm not particularly fond of using an elastic as a hat to head fastening, but it just so happens that with these tiny bases and a steep brimmed hat, an elastic is pretty much the only fastening that will work. So here goes. Cut a length of elastic to match your hair colour. The length of this elastic should be determined by pulling it gently around the base of your head up to where your cinema base will sit. It should be just tight enough to hold the hat down, but loose enough so that it doesn't pull. Every elastic will be different, so try it on every time you do this for each hat. I have tied double knots on the ends of the cut elastic and I am going to pin these to the hat base. Notice that I have pinned the elastic about one third towards the front of the cinema base. This is to provide the hat with an anchor point directly opposite the base of your head, which is where the elastic will create the tension for the hat to stay put on your head. Sew the elastic to the base, poking your needle through the knots. Almost the final step, sew everything together. I have pinned my base to my brim, making sure that the bias back of the base matches up with the fold over on my bias brim. 
As for the type of stitches to use, anything goes here, as long as they are invisible from the top side of the hat. As I sew, I am trying to catch my top stitches at the join of the bias binding on the brim. And on the underside, you can make a complete mess as long as you are going to line it. If you can't be bothered to line it, don't make a mess. Keep those underside stitches as invisible as the top ones. If you are aiming for invisible stitches, remember to insert your needle at a 45 degree angle to allow you to travel. And now the last step. Let's sew in that blocked lining. Just remember, this is totally optional. Once it is pinned in place, sew it using tiny invisible stab stitches. This is going to be difficult and fiddly, but it's too late to turn back now as I made a mess of visible stitches on that cinema base. Hide your knot under the lining. Insert the needle at an angle going through the right side of the lining. Use a pair of pliers to pull the needle out from underneath the cinema base. Fold back the lining and reinsert the needle from the underside of the lining to the top. And repeat. You can use a curved needle to do this too, but I'm not very good at using one of those, so I stick to straight millinery needles and a pair of pliers. Finally, that's all done. Goodness me, I really do hate sewing in linings. And here are my finished hats. I've decided to call this model the Marvelous Macaron because its shape reminds me of, well, a delicious box of delicate macarons. And of course, they are all past Pantone colours of the year. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. This really helps me grow and reach a larger audience. If you'd like to support my work further, you can join my Patreon and receive extra benefits such as group video calls and tailored personal feedback on your hat projects. For the latest updates on my daily work, you can follow me on Instagram at Millinery. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.